Hi. Today, we are going to be learning about acids and bases. All right. We, and um, first of all, what are acids? This is a term that has been used for a long, long time. People have known about acids, but they it took them the longest time to figure out exactly what was going on with acids and bases. And therefore, there's actually several different definitions about what exactly an acid is and, and what a base is. The first one we're going to look at, it was first developed by um, a scientist named Arrhenius. Okay. Now, Arrhenius, uh, he was a, oh, a Swedish scientist. And I want to say from the 1600s. All right. And... Actually, no, I'm sorry. He was from the 1800s. My mistake. And he defined them as hydronium ion generators. Now, a hydronium ion is a polyatomic ion with a positive uh, one charge that consists of a water molecule with an extra hydrogen atom on it. All right. So basically, they produce H3O positive ions when in aqueous solution. Now, what does this mean? It means that when you have an acid and you dissolve it in water, um, the acid is going to lose a hydrogen positive ion, H plus. And that H plus ion is going to be lost because it's going to be attached to a water molecule. And you're going to end up with an H3O molecule. And since it has a charge, it is a polyatomic ion. All right. So, for example, hydrochloric acid, which is a gas, if you bubble that through water, it will lose its hydrogen to water, and you end up with um, hydronium ions and chloride ions. Now, uh, so yeah, he was an 1800s, 19th century Swedish chemist, and he was the first to define an acid. Now, acids have certain physical properties. First of all, they taste sour. Not that I want you guys going around tasting things in the lab. But the sour flavor that anything has is because it is an acid. So when you, uh, you know, like um, have lemon or something like that, uh, citric acid is what causes lemons to have that sour flavor. Okay. And um, the second thing is that they uh, tend to be really good conductors of electricity. As we learned before when talking about solutions, um, any solution that has, um, charged particles in it will be able to conduct electricity well. Well, uh, hydronium ions, they're charged particles, so it allows it to conduct electricity well. Right? It provides mobile charged particles. Uh, now, some chemical properties of acids is, first of all, they turn blue litmus paper red. All right? If it turns it red, then it is an acid. Now, we're going to learn much more about litmus and it, uh, uh, indicate, uh, indicators uh, later, all right? But basically, if it turns it red, it's an acid. Um, they also react with bases to form water and salts, keeping in mind that this term salt is not necessarily uh, sodium chloride salt, but any type of ionic solid that's dissolved in water. So it's going to be... Um, it could be sodium and iodide. It could be sodium or potassium and chlorine and so forth. So it reacts with bases to form water. We'll talk about that in a minute. And the hydronium ions also react with some metals to form water, metallic cations, and hydrogen gas. So if you see in the movies how an acid is like eating through some metal and it's like bubbling and fizzing, this is what they're talking about. Now, if you remember when we were looking at the, um, doing that lab uh, where we had to recognize a chemical reaction. Um, <laughs> my wife, ladies and gentlemen, and my dog who is in a duck costume. Why do you do this to him? <laughs> More to the point, why do you do this to me? Anyways, where was I? <laughs> so, yes. Anyways, um, looking at... 
sorry, um, looking at that lab, um, recognizing chemical reactions. Uh, one of them where you put a piece of metal in one of the solutions and it bubbled and fizzed, that was actually magnesium uh, reacting with hydrochloric acid. And that was the reaction. If you notice, the metal dissolved all the way and it produces lots of bubbles. Well, that's the, that hydrogen gas. Uh, for example, if you take zinc and, and mix it, zinc will also be eaten away and, uh, in, in this reaction that you see here. All right. Um, now, bases. Bases are kind of the opposite of acids, but they're also very reactive. Now, according to Arrhenius, uh, a base is a hydroxide ion generator. Hydroxide, in other words, an OH, capital O, capital H, it's a negative one charge, okay? And when it's dissolved in water, for example, sodium hydroxide, when you dissolve it in water, will produce sodium ions and hydroxide ions. Now, uh, bases have some physical properties. First of all, they taste bitter. So anything that tastes bitter is because it's a base. Kind of weird, huh? So acids taste sour, bases taste bitter. Um, so I don't know if you noticed, but caffeine is a base. And therefore, anything that has caffeine in it tends to taste bitter. Um, so coffee, tea, even chocolate. If you ever had dark chocolate, like really dark chocolate, it kind of almost has a bitter flavor. Now, um, all of these things, they, you tend to add sugar in order to sweeten them so they don't taste as bitter. All right? Kind of weird, huh? So um, caffeine tastes bitter because it is a base. Um, now, bases are also really good conductors of electricity. All right? Again, because they have ch mobile charged particles. Now, bases also feel slippery when wet. So if you uh, feel a base, it is uh, exceptionally slippery. And they also are often good cleaners. Now, soap. Soap is basic. When you get it wet, soap is slippery. And it's a good cleaner. It, uh, bases tend to uh, be able to bind well to dirt and to oils and therefore can uh, clean uh, fairly efficiently, like soap. All right. Now, some chemical properties. Uh, chemical properties, first of all, it turns red litmus paper blue. So remember, um, acids are red, bases are blue. I love chemistry, but I hate you. No, that's um, always get that one wrong. Um, anyways, but acids are red, bases are blue. All right. Um, sorry. And uh, next, uh, they, they react with acids to form, again, water and salts. All right. And... For uh, this process is known as the neutralization reaction, all right? Neutralization is where hydronium ions from an acid and hydroxide ions from a base react to form water molecules in this basic chemical reaction, all right? The base loses that hydrogen um, atom, makes a proton, it goes over to the OH, and you end up with a couple of water molecules. Now, since ions don't come alone, their companion ions combine to form salts, i.e. ionic compounds that I was talking about before. Um, for example, sodium hydroxide solution and hydro hydrochloric acid solution will react to form water and sodium chloride. So it actually produces water, all right? And there is a cool demonstration I would love to show you where you take um, some acid, like 500 milliliters of acid, and 500 milliliters of base, and you combine them together. And you would think that they would form 1,000 milliliters of, of water, right? Or, but they actually form a greater volume. It, they form something like 500, uh, like 1,012 milliliters. And that extra 12 milliliters is from the water that is formed in this neutralization reaction. All right, kind of cool, huh? Hi, today I'm gonna to be showing you guys a, a little cool little demo about the neutralization of acids and bases, the reaction that they do um, when they combine together in order to form water. Now, 
what I got here are some colorful solutions. Uh, and they're only colorful because I added some, you know, food dye. Um, but basically, I did it so that you can easily see where the water levels are. Now, in here, I just have water, plain old water. And this is in a graduated, excuse me, in a um, volumetric flask is what this is called. And I don't know if you can see this well, but right at the top here, it has a little mark, and that indicates exactly one uh, liter, okay, or a thousand milliliters. Now, when I do this, just to illustrate, I have a graduated cylinder, goes up to a thousand, and I'm just gonna pour this in here just so that you can see what the exact volume is. It may seem a little, a little bit off when I do that up here you see that it goes exactly to 1,000 milliliters okay Bring that close 1,000 milliliters so we'll put that off to the side now what I have here are two solutions an acid and a base I have over here one molar solution of hydrochloric acid, a strong acid. And over here, I have um, one molar sodium hydroxide. Now I have equal volumes of these, and each one is at exactly 500 milliliters, all right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to combine these together into the volumetric flask. And if these were just pure water, 500, plus 500 should give me exactly 1,000. So let's see what happens, all right? First of all, I'm just gonna throw in the um, hydrochloric acid. Pour that in carefully. I don't wanna spill anything. And again, they're only colored so that you can see the uh, levels, all right? Usually both of these, as you can see in the bottles, are perfectly clear solutions. Right? They look just like water <laughs> until you notice their chemical properties, such as tasting sour and, and, and so forth. So here we have 500 milliliters of the acid. And again, normally it looks like this. I just put in food coloring. Here's the base, looks clear. But I put in food coloring just to make it a little bit more interesting. And now here is exactly 500 milliliters of the sodium hydroxide. And when I pour these in, and of course, blue and yellow will make green. That's a physical reaction. Doesn't normally turn green, but put it in. Now again, you see here that is um, just below the thousand milliliters. And if I put this in carefully, I have more than a thousand. So the thousand milliliter mark is right here. I have this much more. All right, how much more? Let's see if we can't measure it. I have a little 10 milliliter graduated cylinder here. And if I go and fill this up, so that's 10 milliliters, and there's still more. All right, so that's 10 milliliters, and I'll tell you right now, there's two more. So in this case, 500 plus 500 equals 1,012, okay? And that is because of the water that is created in the neutralization process. The hydronium ions from the acid combined with the hydroxide ions in, uh, for, the, for the sodium hydroxide in the base, and they created water, all right? Um, and so 
those were the basic definitions. And then it came, uh, you know, as we studied chemistry more and we learned more and more information, uh, chemists started realizing that um, sometimes, you know, instead of losing that hydrogen ion uh, to water molecules in order to make hydronium ions, well, what if they lost that hydrogen to something else? And there was no hydronium ions, and yet they're still losing that hydrogen ion. And they're still acting like acids and bases. So there were a couple of scientists um, in 1923, same year, a Danish chemist by the name of Johan Brandsted and an English chemist named Thomas Lowry uh, independently proposed an expanded definition. So they both get um, <laughs> they both get naming rights, as it were. So the Bronsted Lowry definitions uh, basically take into account uh, to include substances that do not form hydronium or hydroxide ions, but still act as acids or bases. All right. So according to them, acids donate protons. It doesn't have to be to water. It can, as long as something that loses an, an H plus ion to something else, that counts as an acid, all right? So in this case, uh, the fact that HSO4 loses an ion, you see if it goes from HSO4 to just SO4, so it loses an H, that means that that is an acid going in this direction. Notice it's a two-way reaction. It's in equilibrium, which means that this counts as an acid, not because it forms hydronium ions. If you notice, there's no hydronium ions anywhere in this reaction, but because it loses a hydrogen ion. Now, since it's an equilibrium reaction, if you look at it going in the opposite direction from H, you know, from this side over, HCO3 negative is also an acid because it loses its hydrogen and gives it back to SO4 and it forms CO3, two negative. So this is an acid and this is an acid. Kind of weird, huh? Well, as they say, you cannot, you cannot donate something unless you find something willing to receive it, okay? And that's where... The uh, base definition is, according to Bronsted and Lowry, bases accept protons. Again, they don't need to form hydroxide ions necessarily. So they don't need to take the hydrogen ions from water. They can take it from something other than water. So, um, for example, NH3, which is ammonia. Ammonia is a base. And it accepts a proton from water, all right? And therefore, it is a base because, yes, it also forms an H plus, HO negative. But, but look at this. CO3, because it is accepting hydrogen from HSO4, you could say that carbonate ion is also a base since it absorbs that H, becomes HCO3. So this is a base. Also, looking at it in the opposite direction, SO4 is a base. Why? Not because it makes hydronium, excuse me, hydroxide ions, but because it accepts this hydrogen from the HCO3. All right. Now, sometimes you have a substance that can sometimes act as an acid and other times act as a base. Water, all right, Water is just such a thing. By the way, that's called amphoteric. Any molecule or an ion that can act either as an acid or a base. Uh, so water, if you notice in this case, water is acting like an acid because um, it is giving up a hydrogen to the ammonia to make ammonium. So it loses a hydrogen. Therefore, water is acting, in this case, like an acid. But if we go back over here, right, go back, right, here, water is, oh, no, 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 almost here, almost there. Here we go. Here, water is acting like a base here because it's accepting this hydrogen from the HCl and it becomes H3O. So there, it's acting like a base. 
All right, let's go on back. Sorry about that. So water can act either as an acid or a base. And that's all I want to talk to you about right now, about acids and bases. Thank you.